talking? Talking until you're sorry. Okay, I'm wet. Oh, there's my gut. Hey, um, this is Robbie Stevenson. We're here with um, Stu Block today. This is for uh, Metal Health. You can get us at Metal, Metal Health Digital um, over Instagram and YouTube. Um, if you don't know anything about me, I am a comedian, but uh, I'm also a diagnosed schizophrenic and uh, recovering drug addict. So uh, that's always fun. And uh, I just want to uh, talk to some awesome metal heads like myself and uh, bring it to you. So uh, without any ado here, uh, I'm going to introduce Stu Block. Stu Block is like the Canadian metal version of Whitney Houston. A voice of the generation, but without the crack. Definitely no crack. Well, that won't help anyone. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we don't see color anymore, Stu, so it's all good. Right. Um, so uh, I just have uh, some questions for you. And, uh, all right, man. That's hey, I just want to say are. also before we start, I want to say, hey, man, your journey is a, is one that <clears throat> reason I'm on here, man, is because you've I've kind of we've been going back and forth for a few years now, occasionally, and um, you know, yeah, I, I know your story. You've been through a lot, man, and uh, you're you got a warrior spirit, man, and uh, and you, you're a good testament to uh, you know, not everything is going to be a silver si uh, that silver lining isn't always going to be perfect at uh, when you're recovering, and there's going to be those dark times that you got to go through, man, but you're telling me about them and you're getting through them. And uh, I think this is a great avenue for you too, man. I think this is awesome. So I'm glad to be part of it. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, dude. That means the world coming from you. Um, no worries. First question we're going to start with was, uh, what was it like opening for bands like Megadeth and Dream Theater when you were in Into Eternity? That was insane. Uh, <clears throat> that whole ride was, the whole Into Eternity ride, like that was my, obviously, pretty much my my beginnings in getting outside of my you know city's exposure so it was the first band that was actually touring uh, uh and it was my introduction to uh being on a record label century media and so you know exposed me to a lot so with into eternity we toured quite a bit so we were touring a lot and uh, when we got those opportunities um you know megadeth and, and dream theater especially dream theater that was that whole tour was amazing you know mike portnoy was like the whole band was phenomenal to us and uh they were they were just such such uh you could tell they're just like awesome metal heads and they just really uh they weren't you know they weren't uh you couldn't not find them or you could not see them and when you ran into them they would talk to you and mike portnoy especially he was the one that really vouched for us um to get on that tour uh to tour with them so uh thanks to him and uh he's he's like a freaking god in in heavy metal as well in the whole world and he's given a lot of people a lot of chance he's worked with a lot of people as well so we were blessed to be able to be on that tour and it was just it was one of our first um it was one of our first bigger tours that we had done um so it was like our first time tim, tim and i were experiencing catering it was like what the fuck it was crazy so we were just like you know, it was like catering. We were like having, we, we would go and get baked and then we would go back and like eat all the pie and we'd see how much pie we could eat. And it was, it was ridiculous. So, um, so we were like experiencing all of these cool things that we, we had read about, you know, and, and then, um, so, and developing relationships with people that uh, are still long lasting to this day, which is really cool. So, um, and then touring with Megadeth, that whole gigant tour exposure was absolutely phenomenal we went through a lot on that tour we'd lost a guitar player he left he ditched us halfway through that tour um but we still soldiered on uh, we got a lot of amazing wise advice from uh dave um dave was really cool to us he on a numerous occasions he talked to us he knew about our situation when we lost the, the our guitar player and he would talk to us several times about because you guys got to keep going da, da, da. he told me you got to play guitar now Stu. you got to play guitar i'm like fuck that <laughs> but uh, uh so it was it was really cool and then i got really sick on that tour and um little story about that tour um i got really sick and i was in catering and my head was like on the table i was i was literally dying 
And Dave, from afar, he goes, hey, man, are you okay? Are you, do you need an ambulance? I'm like, no, I'm all right. I'm just going through a little bit of flu things. It's, that's okay. You know, I don't, want to, I don't want to bother you. He's like, no, come with me. But keep your distance, but come with me. <laughs> so uh, we, we went uh, – we, he went and gave me his, his dressing room. His, he goes, you go have a shower, man, because I know a lot of you guys, the opening acts, you don't have really much going on. We didn't have a dressing room. We just had this little um, shitty – digger bus that we had uh, rented and so yeah he, he he gave me he gave me his dressing room he let me shower and, and he's like you know you can have it i'll let i'll make sure no one comes in here you know you can you know, lock the door it's all good so um i'll be back in like an hour because i got to sign some posters and i was like yeah no problem i'll be out of here in half an hour this is amazing so i you know he he came back and uh i was uh just about to leave and he's like oh well and, and he, he was such a cool guy he just wanted to talk and he was talking to me about you know, high vocalist, because I was a high vocalist on, at the time on the tour. And so it was, uh, you know, and then he started talking about, he was signing the posters and he was just talking about life and really showing me a side of of him that uh, was like, that not many people I don't think get to see. So it was really, really special moment, I thought. That's that's amazing. Like, um, to, to look to tour with the people that you've been looking up to and everything. Um, yeah, I can only I can only imagine that. Um, <clears throat> you know, you were my, saying... my, my my picture froze on my side. Am I still going good on your side? No, no, it's frozen a bit. Yeah, on your okay. side too. All right, well we'll we'll keep going. My mouth is open. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh... Don't use any Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the opportunities are endless. <laughs> they are. But, um, um, yeah, you want to keep uh, going then? We'll keep going. We'll keep going, yeah. Um, okay. You were saying that um, you've seen me before, and if it, you've noticed that I've gained some weight, that's because I buy food now instead of drugs. You're eating. Yeah, eating. This is a good thing. That's, it helps. It helps, it helps a lot. you live. Yeah. But um, second question here, um, is the album The Incurable Tragedy your most important work concerning the content? I mean, you can almost hear Tim Roth's tears hitting the strings of the guitar. Um, can you yeah. tell us about that album? Um, it was a very, very, um, it was a really dark time, a beginning of a dark case. We, uh, <clears throat> Incurable Tragedy definitely was a, is, is just during a very dark time. We were losing a few, we lost a few friends to cancer and then some loved ones and I, my mom had been diagnosed. She hadn't passed yet at that point, but she had been diagnosed. So was, we were going through a lot. So it was one of those things that uh, it's very important work to me. Not I, I, I can't say that it's my most important because I. it's tough to even say. I can't tell you there is one song or, or one album that is it's like most children, important. You know? it's like yeah, they it's really are. Kid. I was just really actually going to – you read my mind, brother. Um, they are like – kids you know and so you got to kind of like treat them as such and so you know um one of my you know like it's just it, one of my big things that i that i think about with my music is it's like a travel in time with my life you know what i mean or like any musician when they're writing music if they if they're a principal songwriter or they're part of the songwriting process um the the artist can look back and and actually pinpoint stages in their life well oh that was that that was during that time in my life you know because i was writing this way or you know those types of things so it's really kind of like a map an emotional map personally for me um going back in time with all of the works i've done be it with into eternity or iced earth because they're all they're all chapters in my life and they're all evolutions of me so i, I think they're all kind of real special but the incurable tragedy that one is a, it's 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 phenomenal and i was blessed to be part of that and be able to let that out of you know let that as use that as an outlet for therapy not only personally but use it as an outlet for therapy for other people because i still get emails <clears throat> from people that are uh they're like man you know that that song really got to me and it really helped me and and it's helped a lot of people so that's like winning to me that's totally winning when it helps people personally like it's therapy then and, and i honestly don't believe that, i think music has done 
like so much for a lot of people in in coordinates with them helping themselves you've got to help yourself too you got to have that power in yourself to be able to help yourself but music really helps facilitate and kind of organize those types of things and maybe even bring out those emotions say if you're suppressing those emotions it'll bring them out and go fuck i gotta tackle these situations i gotta tackle these things in my life so not only is it a map but it's a good therapy not only it was good therapy for myself but but for other people and i and i'm still blessed uh to still get feedback to this day about about that uh the works that we did there for sure that answer gave me tingles on my mouth. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, my mouth is still open. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is not good, but here we go. Yeah, whatever. Okay, um, we'll go from a, a question about cancer to um, <laughs> on the road uh, traveling by bus. Uh, pooping isn't as glamorous as at home, not to mention foreign foods. Do you have any funny poop stories? Yes, I do. I have... A, I have... I think I've got two, I've got two fairly good ones. One will bring us back to the Gigantour. Okay. So that's that's story number one. So I'll talk to you about that one. So <clears throat> like you're saying, poops are poops are kind of sacred things um, on the road because you if you're in a nightliner or you're in a bus, like if you're blessed to be in a bus, you can't shit on a bus. You have to wait for your moments. So either uh, rest stops or when you're at the venue. Sometimes you want to be the first one in the venue bathroom because four buses roll up and you got four buses of a whole bunch of fucking sweaty, gross motherfuckers that all want to take shits. So that's a deal. So you got to kind of race for that's a race for the for the bathrooms. Um, so they're sacred, right? <clears throat> so, um, but on the Gigant tour, um, I had uh, what was it? We had, I believe. And I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but I either it was the fact that we were doing off shows and we had skipped into Mexicali. We did a show and then we had to scoot back and join the tour. And I had eaten some really bad food and gotten a little bit uh, of the runs for a few days. Or it was just that I, we were on the tour and I had eaten something and I'd gotten the runs. Regardless, I had gotten the runs <clears throat> and it was uh, one of those situations where we were rolling up to the venue. And we were lucky on the Gigant Tour because a venue in that situation was a fucking arena. So we were totally blessed to have these awesome, like, really decent facilities, like a, a, like a small little locker room to the to each band kind of thing. So that was super cool. Um, so, yeah, so we're, I'm, like, going to the tour, like, running. <clears throat> and so my mission was get off the bus or get off our, our little, I think it was, like, an RV thing. Find the tour manager, where's the Into Eternity locker room, and fucking make my way to that bathroom as quick as I possibly fucking could. So I got off my, got off the RV, fucking hand, finger, straight up my asshole, I'm pretty much at that point, <laughs> plug in the hole, and fucking running, and I, and so who fucking turns the corner? Dave Mustaine. <laughs> so he turns the fucking corner. He's like, hey, Stu, how are you doing this morning? I'm like, I'm okay, sir. Like, it's like you're talking to a military sergeant, right? And you can't, you got to stand at attention. You got to make eye contact. You can't be showing any sort of like swaying. You got to make sure you're on every word. And he's like, so how are you enjoying the tour? I'm like, yeah, it's great. I think it's great. And I'm just like dying every two seconds. And so at one point, this conversation kept going and I let go. <laughs> I let, I let go. And what happened was trickling down my leg and it was going to get very embarrassing. I was able to cut the conversation off, make my way to a TM. At this point, I don't know what trail I was leaving. I don't know. But I do know that I made it to a TM and I go, where's this? Where's the Into Eternity dressing room? Fucking so lucky. It was literally maybe five, six paces behind her. And so I run into the bathroom and it was just a, a fucking horror movie in there. And uh, that was that's one of my poop stories. I think we'll keep it to one poop story for today. Okay. That was awesome, though. Um, okay, um... Uh, what's it like when you first got into into uh, Iced Earth? 
Uh, after uh, such legendary vocalists as uh, Matt Barlow, who was on this guy, and many others, and Tim the Ripper Owens, who did uh, this guy. Um, or, you know, was it was it, was the transition easy because um, both your bands start with the letter I? At I-E, which is really weird. So, yeah, um, that was uh, the transition for initials from band to band was easy. Yeah, that was a smooth cool. transition. Um, super easy. Uh, but but uh, how did it feel? Well, I got I guess I got to talk to you about where we were with Into Eternity at the time. Um, at that time, things things we weren't we weren't doing a lot. We weren't doing a ton. And uh, there were some uh, record ish label issues and there was um just some things happening and it just was kind of stagnant at the time. <clears throat> so I was actually working a day job at the time and uh, ended up getting the call from um, record label uh, guy at, uh, at uh, Century Media. After about 20 minutes, he finally told me it was to try out for Iced Earth. And so uh, a day later, I was talking to John on the phone and um, basically got flown out uh, to go try out and and write with him and it man the rest you i mean uh, you could i've said this in shit ton of in, interviews and i'm sure the story's out there a billion times but basically flew out there uh rest was history we met we wrote and i sang for him and it was like yep let's do this so um as far as filling the shoes of matt barlow and tim owens it was intimidating it was it, i'm not gonna lie i'd be a complete liar if i told you that i was like yeah no problem uh, i'd be i'd be an egotistical liar if i told you that those two gentlemen are uh up there with ronnie james dio to me uh they're up there with like they're up there with rob halford they're up there with bruce dickinson you know they're they're just they're like top tier performers and musicians so i've always looked up to them went to many uh, went to many Iced Earth. I went to a few Iced Earth shows uh, before I was in Iced Earth. I toured with Iced Earth before I was in Iced Earth, and I got to see uh, Tim Owens and Matt Barlow, and uh, both of them left fucking legacies within that band. You know, um, uh, Matt is one of the guys that's like, you know, everyone's like Matt Barlow. He's the voice of Iced Earth, and and so you know when you first embark upon that kind of legendary status you know you're really intimidated you're like oh i gotta i gotta focus i gotta i've been given the job john sees something in me he sees something in me and the thing about the thing that really made it work is that john did see something in me but he knew that he needed to work with me he knew that he needed to uh he knew there was some still some some work to be done because but he saw that there was a, I think he knew that there was a spirit there and that I loved, I, I was very blessed to be there and that we hit it off as, as, as friends, like. Cool. All right, we're back. We had a technical malfunction, but uh, these things happen. Um, yeah, it's all good. Well, I don't know. I just want to finish what I was saying. Just to, just to recap, we were talking about just the feelings of entering Iced Earth from, from Into Eternity. We got pretty much up to, you know, uh, that just I'm blessed to be in a band with um, with John. He is one of my best friends in the whole world. We're writing together, and I just can't wait to go ahead and write the new Iced Earth record with him. Uh, there's, It's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be killer. So, um, And uh, just be in a band with uh, Luke and Jake and, uh, you know, and, and Brent. And it's just been great. You know, the, these guys are our are, are brothers and their their family. And... Uh, but most of all, you know, it's just, it's really, it's really killer being very comfortable. And uh, so that's killer. Great. I'm really happy for you, Stu. Um, okay, we got uh, one more. I'm going to ask, uh, uh, what do you do when you're rocking out on stage and you get hair in your mouth and it's time to sing again? Do you just fish hook it out or what? Fuck yeah, man. So basically it happens all the time, um, especially first two songs. Hair is a little bit more dry right yeah. um it has happened with wet sweaty hair before so i'm not gonna lie it has happened with both kind of consistencies but with the dry hair it's even worse because it really clings like like uh all over and then when you so i've had to like it goes in and then i've had to go like that and you pull it out yeah so that sucks and you go Bleh! you know so it's it's never good 
It's never good. It's like, uh, it's you know what also sucks when you get those lone hairs going up your butthole? That's the worst. <laughs> that is the fucking worst. I'm telling you. It comes out and it feels really weird when you got, when they're this long and you're like, ah, my ass, what's going on? <laughs> awesome. Um, so um, I know you uh, did some guest vocals in um, the latest Into Eternity album, and uh, Amanda Kieran, am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, you are. That was, yeah, a long time ago. For in, in retrospect to me, like, doing anything with Into Eternity, that was a long, like, I, nine years, a long time ago. Oh, okay, cool. I know the album yeah. came out, like, um, maybe a year totally. and a half ago. But yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Time. So it took a while to be able to put the album out. That's what happened. Was it was uh, a long time, but yeah, no, that was fun to do. It was fun to do. It was weird because I was doing that um, while I was in ice, because because I got the iced earth gig and then into eternity ended up getting a few a few gigs. So while I was actually recording with iced earth. Um, John was super cool, man. Like he, like always. And he was like, yeah, you, you, you were in that band and, and they got no singer, man. So, you know, it's not, um, if you want to do it on your dime, it's my blessing. I'm not going to hold 